Hi everyone, Adam from Audient here, and today we're going to be looking at getting you started with your ID interface and with FL Studio. First things first, we're going to need to plug in our ID interface. In this case, I have an ID 14 here, and you can use this with an ID 4, ID 24, ID 44, and get this working with my Mac. We can also use a Windows PC. The setup is practically identical. First things first, I've got an ID 14 here today, but the process is the same for an ID 4, ID 24, and ID 44. And take our USB-C cable. If you have a computer that only has USB-A ports, that should work absolutely fine. You can get USB-A to USB-C cables and plug that into your interface. And the interface will turn on. In the case of the ID 44, you will also need to plug that in to external power. On my screen, it's asking me if I should allow this accessory to connect. Of course, that's what we want. And now not much else will happen because we need to install the drivers. I'm going to open up my browser, which in this case is Chrome, and go to audient.com. Here we can go to the product page and find our product. In my case, here the ID14. And on this page is a button that says Downloads. Just down the page, there is the Mac driver or the Windows driver. Download whichever one you need. And in my case, I have to drag and drop the ID onto Applications. On Windows, you would double click on the installer and then run through the steps as necessary as it guides you. Now on Mac, I do have to open my applications and open that ID app one time and then that will ask me that's downloaded from the internet are you sure yes it would like to access the microphone which in this case is the id14's microphones we can check for updates automatically and there's the arc creative hub which in this case i'm already a member but if you'd like to join arc then you get lots of opportunities for wonderful free plugins free software discounts all sorts of great offers, check that out. I'm going to click already a member and then close that down. Now you will be able to see at the top right corner, the ID icon, which tells me that the ID mixer is installed and the ID drivers are active. Now, if I click this and go to show mixer, that will show me everything about the ID 14 in real time. Same with the 24 and 44. The ID4 has a slightly different setup. There is no mixer with the drivers, but the ID4 is so relatively simple that it's a slightly different kind of thing. And that will still come up absolutely fine. Next, I'm going to plug in a microphone and make sure that's all working perfectly well. In my case, I have a studio condenser microphone here, and I'm going to plug this in to the ID14 on channel one. On the ID series of interfaces, we do need to engage phantom power for condensers on a switch on the front of the interface. So I'm going to turn on 48 volts now. And then once that's settled, I'm going to turn up the gain, which is the, the knob on the front, until I'm getting a reasonable level that you can see on the screen there. Now I know that's ready for when we open our door. Now that our interface is plugged in and working with the drivers, our microphone is plugged in and we're ready to go, it's time to open up FL Studio. Now, once FL Studio is running, we'll need to set up our ID interface to work with FL Studio. So the first thing to do is go to FL Studio, the top left and settings. Now in the audio tab, that's where we need to be at the top. We need to change our input and output device. So we're going to change it from whatever it was, whether it was default audio device, it was previously on my MacBook speakers, uh, to Audience ID 14. On Windows, you want to make sure that it's an ACO device and again is your Audience ID interface. The sample rate, you can choose depending on what kind of project you want to be working on. If you're running at 44, 100, that's traditionally CD quality and 48,000 is for film production, DVD production, anything that's going on YouTube, anywhere where there might be video. So if we choose 48,000, 
Then we click that. It will tell us this needs to be closed before the sample rate can be changed. I'll hit OK. We then have a choice of buffer length as well. So this is a trade-off between how much delay there is in between sound coming from a microphone, going through the ID interface, through FL Studio, and then back out of your speakers or headphones, compared to the amount of stress and strain that is put on your computer and whether it can handle all that work in time. If it can't handle that much work, you will have buffer underruns, as shown here with the number of underruns. Those are where you hear pops and clicks and audio silence and dropouts. If the computer in FL Studio can't handle everything you're asking of it, it simply can't produce the sound. The underruns happen. So the way to get around this is to change the buffer length to be a little bit longer. Once this is all set, we can close this window down and bring up the main FL Studio window. I already have a default project here. You might want to make a new project of your own. And we can make sounds as we wish. If we open the channel rack, there is the drum machine there, which we can use. But let's focus on recording audio for a little while. What I usually want to do recording audio is have something like Edison working. If I go to hit record at the top of the page, it will actually ask me what would I like to record? Whether it's audio into the playlist as a clip or notes and automation, everything. But one of them is audio into the Edison audio editor recorder. If we click this, that will ask us please select an audio input first. And so at the bottom right of the mixer here, we can see that Edison is our top slot and we want to change the input there to be, in our case, mono, because it's a single microphone, from analog one. And now we can see the levels on Edison, the sampler, and as I touch the microphone and make noise, we can see our levels go up and down and we can hear those out of the headphones and out of the speakers. Now, if we have any effects on this, they will be processed and we will hear them accordingly with that latency. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit play and this will record some sound. If I click on Edison, you can see those sounds going in. So if I was to make beatbox sounds or record guitar notes, anything that records sound, I could use this as a quick clip through Edison. I hit stop. And now we get bar loops playing back. And so you can then get into how FL Studio works for you as slightly more advanced kind of methods. Now, if you were having issues with latency there, one thing you can do is you can, at the top right of Edison or any other part of FL Studio, click on the little speaker icon. And that will now mean that we're not hearing it. So we're not hearing it through FL Studio, but what we can do is open up the ID mixer, which is at the top and show mixer. And here we can see audience own mixer. This is showing us the levels from the microphone in real time. So with these faders here, I can bring up this fader all the way to zero. And now I'm going to hear that through here through the ID 14 in this case, and then straight out of the speakers or headphones, be wary of feedback, and that won't have any effects that might have been applied through FL Studio, but there will be practically no latency, and there's the trade-off. If you're hearing things twice, so you're kind of hearing a weird kind of chorusing, ghosting effect, this kind of a doubling thing, chances are you have this fader up in the ID mixer, so you're hearing the near zero latency, and you'll also be hearing FL Studio processing things as well. In that case, we have to choose one of the two to turn off the monitoring. In this case, I'm going to turn it off in the ID mixer, but you could also turn it off in Edison or any other parts of FL Studio where you would have the audio being processed. Hopefully that's enough to get you going, recording audio and manipulating it in FL Studio. There are plenty of FL Studio specific tutorials for production of the audio in FL Studio, but now hopefully you've got enough to be getting going with working with audio with your audience interface. If you need any more help, 
have a look on audient.com under our support section. There is a support team that can help you if there isn't anything there that is helping you out. Thanks for watching, good luck, and I'll see you out there.